gospel reading this morning cries out for a little word of explanation to help us to hear it better. Because it's the genealogy in the book of Matthew, the genealogy of Jesus, the recitation of the names of all of those figures of the Old Testament who formed the ancestors of Jesus. I've become interested in ancestry. In fact, I am in the process of having my DNA checked to see just exactly where I really am coming from. In a sense, uh, what we are touching in this reading is Jesus' human DNA. And I think it's important for us to uh, not be, um, how would I say, it? annoyed by this list of names, but to look for the ones that we recognize and to, rec to realize also that the ones that we don't recognize were also very significant people in the heritage of the Jewish people leading up to Jesus. So let this kind of cascade of names just flow over us to uh, immerse us in this sense of um, where Jesus is coming from and therefore, what is truly our own heritage as members of Jesus' body, as members of the church? And so with those ears, I'd like to invite you to now listen to this reading. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The beginning of the Holy Gospel. The book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham became the father of Isaac, Isaac the father of Jacob, Jacob the father of Judah and his brothers. Judah became the father of Perez and Zerah, whose mother was Tamar. Perez became the father of Hezron, Hezron the father of Ram, Ram the father of Aminadab, Aminadab became the father of Nashon, Nashon the father of Salman, Salman the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. Boaz became the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth. Obed became the father of Jesse. Jesse, the father of David, the king. David became the father of Solomon, whose mother had been the wife of Uriah. Solomon became the father of Rehoboam. Rehoboam, the father of Abijah. Abijah, the father of Asaph. Asaph became the father of Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat, the father of Joram. Joram, the father of Uzziah. Uzziah became the father of Jotham. Jotham, the father of Ahaz. Ahaz, the father of Hezekiah. Hezekiah became the father of Manasseh. Manasseh, the father of Amos. Amos, the father of Josiah. Josiah became the father of Jeconiah and his brothers at the time of the Babylonian exile. After the Babylonian exile, Jeconiah became the father of Shealtiel. Shealtiel became the father of Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel, the father of Abiad. Abiad became the father of Eliakim. Eliakim, the father of Azor. Azor, the father of Zadok. Zadok became the father of Achim. Achim, the father of Eliud. Eliud, the father of Eleazar. Eleazar became the father of Matan. Matan, the father of Jacob. Jacob, the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary. Of her was born Jesus, who is called the Christ. 
the total, thus the total number of generations from Abraham to Jacob, pardon me, from Abraham to David, 14 generations. From David to the Babylonian exile, 14 generations. From the Babylonian exile to the Christ, 14 generations. The Gospel of the Lord. Some of you know that for the past 10 or 11 years, I have led an annual pilgrimage, not doing it now anymore, uh, to Turkey. Turkey being called the Holy Land of the Church. Who called it that? Well, none other than Pope Benedict XVI. We talk about the Holy Land of Jesus, uh, but the Holy Land of the Church is actually where the Church grew up, where the uh, significant events happened that determined how we receive the revelation of Jesus Christ, how we are taught by the Church to believe in Jesus as the Word of God, as the Son of God. And in that pilgrimage, we visited various areas that were significant over this 2,000-year history. Not just the, thing, the places of St. Paul or St. John, but places like the councils, uh, the early councils of the church, the cities where some of the great fathers of the church and great writers and theologians were, as well as many of the, of the conflicts that happened in the formation of our heritage of faith. Clearly, you can see, I feel that is important because you discover who you are and how to live in the present when you come back into contact with where you have come from. And our heritage is an important part of where we have come from. I tend to liken this idea of pilgrimage to um, exploring your grandparents' attic. Some of you have a smile on your face when you think about the treasures that you might have discovered as a little child uh, sneaking into your grandmother's attic and um, discovering things that, of course, you had to ask your grandmother sometimes embarrassingly uh, to her, what, what all of that was, what some of those things meant. And yet, it's in doing that, it's in exploring your grandmother's attic that you get a little bit more of a sense of who you are and where you are coming from. And it's very much the same thing when we uh, explore the Old Testament as well as the New Testament. But the Old Testament gives us a picture of the human imperfection and yet God's care to bring us up out of that human imperfection and human sinfulness that went into Jesus Christ. In these names that we just heard, we had some of the best of Jewish Israelite history and some of the worst. And all of those are the mixed bag similar to our own ancestors, the mixed bag that produced Jesus, who now we are members of his body. And so it's really important for us, as members of his body, to have some kind of an appreciation, some kind of a, an, an understanding of our heritage so that we know who we are as children of the one Father in Jesus, and how we can learn from our past as to what is expected of us. What are the joys and the riches of this membership in the body of Christ? But also, what are some of the ways that we could betray our own identity? Some of the pitfalls, some of the uh, uh, ways of saying no to what God wants of us. So we need to consider both 
And in this genealogy of Jesus, looking at those characters, um, we can uh, discover something that is truly a lesson for us, how we can learn from our own heritage. And so let us pray. Let us pray in particular for our, our Holy Father, Pope Francis, who today has turned 80. It's, it is his birthday. In honor of his birthday, I am offering this Mass for him, and I invite you to join me in, in that intention. Uh, I'm kind of filled with hope on this day because I look around here and see many of you very, very active beyond the age of 90. And I'm, uh, I'm very hopeful that maybe some of us will be around when our Holy Father celebrates his 90th birthday, still active in his uh, ministry as Bishop of Rome and as our Holy Father. But at any rate, let's not look too much at the future. Let's look to the present and ask for God to continue to sustain him with his grace. We pray to the Lord. Amen. For all of those who are suffering from any cause in our world, that we may look upon them with compassion and prayer, pray for them, and as the Lord might move us, be instruments of his love and mercy to them, we pray to the Lord. For the sick and the suffering, for those who are close to death, and for those who have died, we pray to the Lord. And finally, for our own needs and intentions on this day, we pray to the Lord. God our Father, you have given us such a rich heritage of faith. We ask that now we may continue to live our faith in a way that is faithful to our heritage and lays a foundation for the future generations 